Okay, welcome to my little short tutorial. There's something that's very frustrating, and if you've ever tried to do it up to this point unsuccessfully, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm just going to show you how to actually um, how to install GLFW, which is a event API for Windows and Linux. So if you're programming and you're needing GLFW to be used in your programs, you're going to definitely need to uh, know how to install GLFW. And it's not very uh, straightforward. The instructions are really not on the website. And if you've tried up to this point, you're probably very, very frustrated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, open the new window. So first and foremost, we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need we're going to need a make for Windows, GNU make. We're going to also need, um, obviously, the GLW uh, source files, right? Because we're going to be building from a source. And we're going to need MinGW, obviously, because if you're going to be doing anything, any kind of programming, you're going to obviously need to have MinGW. So, first, you're going to, let's just go with this one, which is probably the easiest one to do. First, you're going to actually need to download MingW because that's the first thing you're going to need. And for that, it's quite obvious what you do. You just download the installer. Okay, there's a site maintenance going on. Oh no, there isn't. Mentioned it. Okay, anyway, so when that starts, obviously, now you download it, as I've already done. You open it, you install it. Once it's installed, I'm not going to install it twice because I've already got it. You're going to have this option on your desktop, right? You want to go to the base setup, click all of these because I've already done that, so I'm not going to be repeating that. Click all of these and install. Install them by applying the packet that changes. Uh, you'll see that, right? Once that's done, you're going to actually have MingW installed on your system. Of course, uh, it will give you an option to choose where you're going to actually put MingW into. And if you haven't already done your installing and don't know where to put it, you're going to probably probably go to aim to put it in C drive and call it, you know, MingW, right? That's going to have all your include files, your library files, and all that kind of stuff. So you'll see when you install, you'll give you an option of where you want to put it. And if you want to put it as a default, I think the default just gives you that option. Just choose that and install. And once we've done that, next thing we'll install, right? It's going to be uh, make. We're going to need another thing. I just remembered. Sorry. We're going to need C make. C make. We're going to need C make as well. But I'll get to that one after I do these two first. After I do these, sorry, this one, and then I'll do C make and then GFW. So we just download the direct package, setup that package. So just download that, you know, setup. It's going to come up as well. It's Salesforce. It's going to come up. Download it. You know, it's already got it. Open it. It's gonna do its thing. I'll give you an option. Oh, this is serious. so. This is uh, this is make. Not C make. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, so this is make. You know, you install it. It'll give you an option of where to install it. I think the option is yep. Gu. So it's gonna be in Gu Win. So another thing I'm gonna obviously talk about is adding all these two paths variables, system path variables. But first for now, just install all of this. Install make. Because I've already done that, obviously I'm not going to do it again. Then we need to download CMake. Uh, also, also similarly, you're going to install the CMake installer. Right. Download it. I've already got it. Open it, run it. Do its thing. Bearing in mind, we're going to have to add the system variables for all those things. My notepad. All right, so we need to add, make a, we need to add system variables. CMake, an environment path. We're going to need it for GNU make. We're going to need it for mean W. And we're going to need it for. Uh, that's all we're going to do for those three, pretty much. Senior GLW is not going to need it. 
Okay, so then once you've done that, you've installed that. I assume you've installed it, you know, pretty straightforward stuff. Alright. So we've got our make, we've got our CMake, we have our Ming W's installed as well. I don't need to run that. Go to our okay, so to get to this, if you don't know how to get to it, just if you're using Windows 8.1, just go environmental system will come up there. Or you can also search for it also in, in, in other Windows systems. Or I think in Windows 7 you just go to system administration. It should be there somewhere. You just look for it. It's basically it's called edit system environmental variables. Right? You don't, what you want to do, you want to open the one that's for your system, not for the user, because the user might not actually let you um, uh, touch the one that's for system. But anyway, once, once that's open, we go down here to system variables, not for user variables. Right, and we edit. And okay, so what we need to do is we need to add all those three things I've mentioned. Now, what exactly will you be adding? If you might be asking that question. Well, we first go to CMake, find out where it is. It was installed here. We're going to add this. This is the stuff we need because when we type into our command prompt, we want CMake to be linked. So that it actually, if you didn't have this link, if you write CMake, Windows would know what to do with it. Right. So what you do is, as I said, you add to your system variables. So whatever you got at the end, just go right to the end of it. Right. Add a semicolon. Right. And just type in your directory there. So it's going to be C program files. Make sure you get this part right. If there's a if it's the 86, which is a 32-bit system, make sure you know you have that there, and not just leave it as program files without adding that information. Otherwise, it's going to go to your 64-bit program file files for, for your programs that are 64-bit. So you know, add that x86, and you know, x is going to be obviously CMake, etc. And you have to write it exactly as it says here. If you don't write it as it is exactly written there, you're going to have problems. So make sure that you've got it perfectly correct and bin. Alright, so that's that one done. I've already got it, I'm not going to add it again. So that one's done. Now we need to do GNU make. Now GNU make was also added, uh, installed to program file, I think it was. But you know, keep track of where you're installing these things when you're installing them. Where are you? Where are you? Right there. So also, again, we need to add the bin to our system variables. Same thing, semicolon at the end. Make sure you put that semicolon at the end. <sighs> Forward slash program files, files, x86, da 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 da, da etc. GNU win32. As it says, exactly how you see it there, copy it. So it has GNU win32 bin. So again, so that if we're running, we run our thing, we just go make, and make will actually work. Of course, it's not going to work now because it's got no targets. All right. Now, once that's done, right, the last thing we do is to add min, min w to our um, system variables as well. Same thing, find out where it is. Obviously, it's going to be in this case C. If you've installed it here, min w, and make sure you put bin because that's all our executables are in here. Right. Uh, okay, so I've got our and I said so it's going to see this time mean as exactly how it says there uh, bin. I'm actually separate these things by a semicolon. Yeah, I already got it in there, so I'm not gonna add it twice. Okay, so now everything is where it's meant to be. Okay, all that's left now is we have to actually install GLFW. Alright, so what we do is, we, you obviously have to download it firstly. So we download our, you go to our source package. So we'll come up, I've already got it. Thank you, I don't really need to do that again. So we go to our downloads, we compress for me. Where is it? Where is it? There it is, the GLW extracted. Extract it, you know, once you extract it. GFW, where are you? Here you are. Go into it, and now what happens is here we've got a strange. If you've actually, if you're not familiar with Linux, installing things on Linux, or whether you are familiar with it, you'll notice that we have, you know, a CMake list. We have this 
all of these various folders and things and you know related to our source file. So what we need to do is we actually need to build this. You know, what we right now have is let's just say the programming code behind the software in GLFW. Right, so we need to build it. So how are we gonna do that? Alright, pretty straightforward. We find our uh, where are you CMake GUI. So you find your CMake GUI, you can run it from command prompt as well. You can run it from command prompt. You can actually just go CMake if you've done that system very well correctly, we'll open up by itself. So now that we've done that, right, we need to first go to our source file, which is the only one that we downloaded and we unzipped, right? And we need to go to it, choose it, and we need to find where we're going to actually put our build. So I've already created a folder here called glue, uh, sorry, not glue. Yeah, you need a glue build, but I need to create a folder, another folder, which I'm going to call Whoops, that's in the wrong place. So I'm going to make another folder and call it. You don't have to do this, you can put it anywhere you want, really. Or GMFW build. This is where your build file is going to go. Alright, so I've done it there. Let me just get rid of this thing. What is it here? Actually, I've got something in there. I'm going to not do that. So, anyway, we've, that's our build file here. Right, and what we need to do next is to configure it to actually build for mingw. So we just choose mingw, make files, use the fault native compilers, which is going to be the ones that are in the bin of make file, which is those things we added to system variables, GCC, G, etc. Um, finish that. And this is going to start working. It starts looking for those things that it needs to run. Let it do its thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now it does this for us. Configure, configure us the first time. We need to press configure again after this. And then we need to press generate. Okay, so that's done. We're finished with this for now. We now go to our compress folder, to our build, which is here. We need to actually go also. We need to get into this with our command prompt. So, all right, we're here. We're in this file. Now, what we're going to have to do in here is we've got this make file, right? Which is what we did. We built a make file from that. We ran CMake, right? CMake uses information that's in the. Uh, if you look back into this, there's a CMake list, right? That's what we pretty much ran, if you're really interested. In it. Anyway, uh, once it did that, it built it for our system, which we chose, obviously, in W. Yeah, you could have done it for anything else, as you see the options for it, which you might see for yourself. There's various options. Anyway, so now we've built this. Now what we want to do is we want to run make. Uh, also, uh, one thing I should have mentioned before, which I might have skipped back to CMake. Where are you? Where are you, CMake? There you are. Is we have a destination folder here. Is when we do make, when we run make, it's going to be. Uh, this is going to be the destination where it's going to install everything. You can change that. If, for example, we put it just to be GLFW. Right. Whoops, sorry, click that. And if you want to change that around, just configure it again. Configure again. Generate. So that when we run make, it's going to be putting everything into that file. Right, so that's where we're going to find the result of running make. So now what we do is we run make. Pretty straightforward stuff. Make is going to do its thing. Right. Which is actually called compiling. It's actually compiling our files, which is our object files. It's going to do its thing. Let me 
as quickly as that. So while we're waiting for that, I'm just going to get. I've got to find an example. Where's that example? Okay, here's an example file. Copy file. You put that down. File save as. Uh, back to the program. I'm going to just call it test2.cpp. Let me keep that one. Put that in here. Put that right in spine there. Okay, let's see how we finished here. Nope, still going. So now it's running its mate still. It's just compiling our build for our system. Pretty straightforward stuff. While we're waiting, okay. So now, what we once we've run make, we're going to run make and store. And once this is finished, we're done. If you get errors here, if you get errors here, just put a post. Post in the comments, and I'll deal with them. So now, what once we're finished, it's going to give us, as you can see here, it's going to give us where, what what was actually put, you know, the files and stuff where they were put and stuff like that. And we're going to take that information. Now you're running Ming W. That's that's what I pretty much said. This video is doing. It's running. It's running for Ming. We installed this for Ming. You know, if we'd been running it for anything else, it would have been different. So anyway, now that you've done that, you go to your GW file. It's going to have an include file, right? Which is going to be your header files. You're going to pretty much take these, copy them. Back to C, back to your Ming W folder. Go to include, and you're going to paste it into here in the folder. Create a new folder in include, and put that in there. Okay, and we go to lib, right? And we're going to paste our other file, other file. Just go here, GW. lib. We're going to take paste this file, lib GW, Copy this, obviously. And put that in here directly. Though. This one goes in directly. My one is in here somewhere. Replace the file, whatever. Okay, now that we've got that, we're pretty much set up to use the GLFW. So, just to show that it works, we're just gonna make my files. As I've already built that file, as we know, we built that file. Right, test to CPP. We're going to run it now. G plus plus test to test right, test two right CPP and da, 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 da. okay. Uh, we are going to have to link this with GFW three. What else does it have? Does it need G? Oh, I think it now thirty two. And I've missed something here. And you're going to have to also include GDI32. Now our program will compile. Okay, so as I said, as a header, you've used its various functions and commands. And you've linked the library, you've linked OpenGL, and you've linked to GD. So, anyway, once you've added those two things to the link, you should have your file. If you're going to run it, it's just output file which is in this case a.exe because I haven't actually named it to anything. Run it and there it is, does nothing. A more interesting one would have been that actually has some OpenGL in it. That more interesting has something in it to show us. And that's it.